Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back on Bannerlord, more specifically the Old Realms mod, which is a massive Warhammer Fantasy conversion mod. Now, it's received a big update, all of which is playable by yourself if you want to check it out for yourself in the description below. Keep in mind you're going to have to follow all the instructions, so I do suggest joining the official Discord for them. And yeah, let's just jump right in. Also, before anything, ignore my cursor. I had changed the resolution of the game, which unfortunately was for a different program that I'm using. I'm now using Shadowplay, and yeah, I forgot to change it back. So my cursor might be all over the place when I'm actually trying to click on stuff. But with all that being said, so what's been updated? Well, a bunch of different things. You see... This has been progressing in a very interesting way. They've been doing monthly dev reports and so on. And what this has done is brought in a bunch of more playable aspects of stuff. We've been able to see new stuff like Beastmen. But right now we have to make our character. And obviously I've gone for a vampire account. You get all these different things. This is just like Vanilla Bannerlord in a sense. Where you pick your culture. You have to start picking your traits. Which gives you some little skill points. And right now you can only play through the Empire or the vampire counts it just has a little bit of variety there but there is a lot to go through you have to make your character with the usual stuff i think the vampires are based on the uh horse rider faction from vanilla i just can't remember what they were called but there's a lot to go through there so you know you can pick a priest of more you can even be a necromancer you can be a vampire too and that's what i want to showcase today i just want to play around with this because i've been waiting for this update for a while it actually dropped at the end of may but unfortunately due to some matters that i needed to attend to i've not been able to check it out just yet which honestly is no excuse is no excuse because this is a fantastic mod and really it should be time that i just jump right in and do a video which is why we're here today. So the idea is we're going to play as a vampire. We're just going to explore the map a little bit because it is a rather large map. It's absolutely insane what they've done so far. We're going to play as a necromancer's apprentice and a vampire just so we can get access to some magic because magic is always really really cool and I've not been able to try this before so this is going to be fresh eyes for me. Anyways, just skipping ahead a little bit, we've spawned into the world and we'll be starting in the areas of Sylvania. We can see that the map has added a bunch of new playable areas. We've got a massive amount of zones here. So you can see, obviously, all of Sylvania is pretty much done at this point. We do have access to Averland. We do have access to Sterland too. It is massive. This map is freaking huge. When we start going over areas, we've got a lot more territories going out to the east of the Warhammer world. Sorry, the west. And it's just awesome. It's just awesome. There's a lot to play with. It's just huge. Like, I was scrolling around. Right now, they've only got territories which would be considered more or less like the map for Total War Warhammer 1 in a sense. Just a bit less. And there's just so much to it. Obviously, those areas aren't just playable at the moment. But they're adding in with every more or less, I think, patch. This is the second playable patch. And there's already so much to it. It's just absolutely massive. It takes you a while to go through things. And there's enough for you to cause enough chaos if you want to. I can't wait to see what they do with more stuff. Because we do get a few races showing up already. And it's just insane on how cool this all looks. You'd also been able to see that we're also now a vampire with very little stats, so we're going to have to level up. But then again, this is Bannerlord. It doesn't take a lot of time to actually level up, just get into combat, and there you go. But it's pretty impressive overall, and it just gets even more so when we start looking towards a spellbook. Because yes, we have access to a spellbook, which I think is really, really, really cool. The idea is that you have to learn spells, and you've got access to different laws of magic. It really much depends on what you are and yeah this is super cool it's just amazing that they've added so many different options so the idea now is that we're just going to explore around we're just going to move around there's so much to see and you can already see that there's already different enemies there you can see all these little minor little factions where you can fight and start getting some renown up because obviously that's really important it's still banner lord so you will need to get your renown up to be able to join with a faction you know become a mercenary or become a, a character in a, a, an actual established clan it's one of these things which i really really like about banner lord but i'll be very honest with you i pretty much just bought banner lord because i kind of was like expecting a mod like this so uh yeah we're already here but yeah so we can move around we can go into different locations they've got some units like for example if we go into sylvania we can recruit some living sylvanians and living sylvanians will be focused around 
getting some little stats up so you can make them, you know, just stay troopers. It's nothing like fantastic. They're not like going to be 100% great. They're not going to be amazing. But the idea is just to have something if you so want to have a living force. However, we go to big cities and once again keep ignoring the mouse cursor. This should be fixed by the time that we do a second video. It's just, uh, I wasn't expecting this to work like this. It's a bit annoying. But however, yeah, you know, we're in Castle Drakenhof now. We're able to recruit regiments of renown, which, well, I can't because I am way too weak. I'm literally just a tier zero clan. But we can see loads of different things. We can see that they've got armies of undead garrisoning the area. We've obviously got Manfred keeping the whole Draconov castle safe, which is annoying because, you know, Manfred did everything wrong. So we're going to have to go for him eventually. But the idea is, you know, we can relax here. It's safe for us. We're a vampire too. We can go to the graveyard and start actually getting some units because the idea is we want an army of undead. And I feel like that's really, really important, especially if we're going to be playing a little bit of a vampire. It just takes time to wait and you'll start getting some units, which I think is pretty cool. And we can get a decent amount of units at the very beginning. They're only going to be basic skeletons. They're going to be very, very squishy. So you're going to have to make sure that you actually pay attention to what you're doing, which is something that I generally don't do. And yeah, I mean, just level them up. Get into fights and just start going out there because you can turn them to skeleton uh, swordsmen, skeleton champions, crypt guard. Then you can start turning them to black knights. You can turn them into uh, loads of different things. Spirit host too, which I think is really, really cool. The idea is you have units which look really, really fun. And well, you're playing as a vampire count. You want to have an undead army. Having mortals is fine, especially for role playability because Sylvanians are known to bring mortals into the fray. But I just love the idea of bringing an army of skeletons all over the place. As far as I'm aware, not all the areas have like custom castles and so on. We're still in Drakenhof at the moment, but you know, they've got the banners up, which is already adding to it. You will already start to see like, for example, Graveguard patrolling the area or Blood Knights and stuff like that, which I think is really, really cool. And it's still like, obviously this is still very early in development. This is something that is going to take a while to get completed, but is absolutely impressive because I mean, damn, you know how much work has to go into these types of things? But it's really, really impressive. The armor looks gorgeous, the custom armor. I just love the idea of this, and I've spent my time walking through the settlements because, like, I know a lot of people might be going, well, why are there living servants and so on? But this is actually well known for Sylvania to have living servants. So it's actually very, very law friendly. So I'm having the time of my life just going through this. The battles feel really, really good. I was just never really good at Bannerlord. Uh, it's just one of my issues. Like I'm decent with a bow. I'm decent with a bow, but hand-to-hand -hand combat, I struggle. So having a horde of undead to just kind of do it for me kind of works. And I think it works really, really well. It's pretty interesting to see my forces slam into say, for example, these Ongors and just like beat them away. Like, it depends. Like, I did struggle. I did really, really struggle at some point. However, I have been upgrading my troops, so I do have some better units to fight against a bunch of Ungors. They do have access to bows, and yes, these are beastmen, yeah. They've got beastmen already in the game. You can't play as them. They're just basic Ungors at the moment, or at least all I've seen is Ungors. But it's really, really impressive. It's honestly really, really impressive. I do find Bannerlord really satisfying. The fact that we don't have like a similar style of official for Warhammer games is just beyond me because this is something that's open world. Well, it's not really open world, but you know what I mean. It's got loads of potential, but then we wouldn't have mod like this. Like the mod team are just really on the nose. You see it when they post their monthly updates, when they start posting all their different like pictures or concept arts and so on. It's absolutely amazing. Like... Wow, it's keeping Warhammer Fantasy alive, you know? And that's something that I really, really admire because, you know, Warhammer Fantasy is the best. I, I know some people might say 40k, but no. So I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, but I wanted to showcase this because it kind of reminds me of when you play Oblivion and you max out acrobatics. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool. I like it. I've actually been using it during sieges in my own playthrough uh, to, <laughs> to get into little bits and bobs of areas, which I think is just pretty cool. I think this is only available to the vampires as far as I've seen, but it's still nice. But anyways, I'm going to let you enjoy the victory sounds of the skeleton warriors for just a little bit before we carry on. <laughs> Hey 
Anyways, so the usual stuff of Bannerlord remains the same, you know, with gear and so on. There is a few unique gear. I imagine that while it's still quite early into development, they'll still use a bit of the vanilla stuff, which honestly makes sense because... I mean, the items are good. It meshes really well with the characters, you can see here. And the idea is, obviously, I, I need to get a little bit stronger or else, you know, one or two shots and I'm gone, right? But I'm a big fan of Bannerlord's system anyway, so yeah, just go on from that and see what you can do. The character design is pretty cool too. I don't know how many legendary characters are already in-game, but we will be able to see Manfred in just a few seconds, and he looks awesome. The idea is that obviously they want to bring in some big characters. This is set during the reign of Karl Franz, I believe. So we're going to see Karl Franz. We're going to see Balthazar Gelt. We've seen loads of art for that. And the art looks amazing. They're working with really, really talented artists. Honestly, this is so impressive. And I'm just looking forward to seeing how this progresses as time goes on. Manfred looks awesome. I, uh... I was tempted to fight him, but I'm like, you know, I had a very small force. I'm not going to be able to take him out. I think he had an army of about a thousand. So yeah, it's going to take a while until I can actually take him head on. <laughs> You're also able to recruit companions, which here you can see there's a white kin. And I kind of wanted one because, I mean, he looks badass. He kind of reminds me a lot of his tabletop miniature, which I'm imagining is the interpretation for this. And yeah, it's going to be a little bit expensive. You know, he costs around 2000 I think he was. And you have all the dialogue options. Obviously, a white isn't really going to talk much, but they have to implement stuff like this because it's part of, like, the hard code of the game. And I think it works out quite well because that means that you can get some really cool stuff. It's not only this. If you want, you can get a bright wizard, a celestial wizard I've seen too. The idea is you can tailor your armies. Obviously, I'm going for a vampire build, so I just want undead stuff. And, yeah, I mean, big, beefy dude. They generally have really good stats too, so I was like... If we can get this, then I'll be able to have something that will be able to do a decent amount of damage on behalf of me. Uh, which I think is really, really important because I have nothing but bad stats. And, like, it's very early into a campaign, but I need to be able to have something to, you know, do some damage. I mean, it's very obvious when you start comparing them. And it's cool because that means, well, 2000 doesn't take too long to get. If you know how to plan out your stuff, you can get into some fights. The good thing is, as far as I've seen... I don't need food for my undead, so that works out really, really well, because, well, I'm not going to give them food, they're skeletons, right? So no need to waste money on food, though, mind you, most cases you'll actually just get into fights and take the food from someone else. But you will have to spend money to upgrade your troops. However, it doesn't really cost too much as far as I've seen. It's, like, expanding onto the harder the unit or the better the unit, then the more you'll have to spend, but it's not really a lot of money. Now, this is something really, really amazing. So I'm a vampire, so I can turn into bats and actually, you know, travel in this form, which I think is really, really cool. I've used it in certain areas where you can just jump onto a wall if you want to do some damage, if you know that you can take out some enemies in certain sections, or if you want to get into a position and cast some spells, because some spells can be absolutely brutal. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to showcase those types of spells here because I'm going to do a big live stream kind of campaign on this because I'm really, really enjoying it. If you want to see a live stream campaign, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But there's just so much that can be shown off here. So we can already see a bunch of different factions. These are like the clans and so on. So Almukta's Desert Dogs, the Chaos, Cult of Illumination, which is another Chaos faction. Uh, there's some other cultures like, for example, Wood Elves, Greenskins and Dwarves. I don't think I've seen any and I imagine that they're not in this build but they're probably just leaving there just to say look we're progressing really really well we're testing on our own version which I think is really really cool there's just so much to this game even in its vanilla state Bannerlord has a lot of fun but then turned into Warhammer Fantasy I mean it's kind of like a dream come true isn't it so if you're wondering how to learn more spells you can find characters such as for example this Magister which will teach me dark magic and all that and it's in an area which you know you just go into to a big city if they're there you just have to find them and it's pretty cool because yeah you know it's a very easy way to learn spells they are a little bit expensive so it's going to take a while until you can start getting all the really cool stuff mind you it kind of makes sense because some of these spells are very very strong and you can even buy some law books and all that which i think is really 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 cool the idea is there's just so much to do even with this beta update because this is i think what the second beta is it? Or do we classify as it as an alpha? There's honestly just so much. And obviously you do get into some areas like say for example, you can explore these little zones which do have custom areas and 
it is just so cool. Like, it looks dark, it looks gritty, it looks like a necromancer's lair, and it is just so cool. Actually, it's more of a chaos lair because you can see, like, different symbols for the Cornate faction and all that. But it is breathtaking. It is honestly breathtaking. Right, we're going to be at the end of the video now. However, I will say, if you're looking for something to play, especially something so big scale and watch it evolve, I would highly recommend downloading this mod and giving it a try. It is so fun. I started playing, I think, at like, what, 10 p.m.? And before I realized it was like 3 a.m., which is absolutely insane. There's just so much to do. It's really, really fun. I will have a link in the description below. Honestly, just try it out. You're going to love it. You're going to absolutely love it. If you're a fan of Bannerlord or Mountain Blade as a whole, or even just Warhammer Fantasy, this is definitely something that you're going to really, really enjoy. But with all that being said, if you want to see a stream series on it, let me know in the comments below. And until then, I shall see you all again very, very soon. Have a good day.